What you gonna do? I'm gonna believe- Oh wait a second, they changed the order of the people that sung. That's not fair. Piece of shit game, I want a refund. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Category Show, where I always have to do the duty of deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And I got a pretty positive response to my Parappa the Rapper video I did a few months back. Sorry, Pappy Rappy. It's what I used to call him as a kid. So today I thought, Hey! Why don't I make a video about the sequel? And here we are. It's now time to play Pappy Rappy 2. Pappy Rappy Tappy. If you remember my video on Pappy Rappy, then you'd remember that... Pappy Rappy got the clappy. And because of that, nobody thought a sequel would be made on the PS2 of all things, but the world is a cruel mistress, is she not? And so here we are, Pappy Rappy 2. I say the world is a cruel mistress because I forgot how gruelling and difficult the original game could be on occasion with its overly precise timings, especially on the PS4 version where the input delay is so fucking awful it's not even worth it. In fact, you could even say that this is... the... Dark Souls the music game! So of course it made sense to make another one to further torture the world, but maybe it'd be a little bit easier, who knows. And even if it is a bit easier, that's alright, because maybe instead the game could further torture the world with overly catchy and incredibly cheesy rap music, because we didn't have enough of that before, did we? And I wasn't the biggest fan of this game when I first played it around seven years ago, it just didn't sit well with me. But after replaying it for today's video, oh the game's fucking great! I have no idea what was wrong with me. And I like it a lot better than one, despite the classic that it is. Not too sure about the intro though, the original game had a cheesy but effective introduction to the characters and strange flat yet 3D like a cake with upright minions on World of Parappa, but now it just seems completely confused. We have a nightmare sequence calling back to the original game, which is great, and the premise of the plot which is very easy to follow and much more self-aware and funny than the original. Instead of Pappy just learning how to be a better person to win over Sunny Funny, now he already has her and they've probably, um, had flower and dog hybrid babies? Does that make these two Parappa the player and Parappa slapper? So now the next logical step for Pappy's lore is to do a story about him winning a lifetime supply of noodles and he now can't look at noodles anymore without feeling awful. This is all fine and the story quickly turns into one about every single food in the city turning into noodles and you have to wrap your way to combat it and help out the locals. It even ends up turning into fucking War of the Worlds near the end of the game and I love it. The heat ray sent them However, this intro sets up shit dreadfully because of how the events just happen with no cohesion, flow, or reason. Firstly, Pappy wins his noodles from a coupon in a burger shop. What? Is this a translation issue? At first, I liked it, but now, I don't even want to look at it. The only thing that gets me going is the lovely Sunny Funny and her sweet smile. Wait, wait, what? What? What, what does that have to do with it? So he doesn't like eating noodles, but what really gets him going is Sunny Funny. What does, does that mean he wants to eat her? This is all fixed once we start the cutscene off to stage one though, where Pappy runs away from Sunny's noodle dinner she made from him and goes to get a burger. Relax. What the fuck is that? I'm not relaxed, I'm not relaxed. Get your lips off me, you sick fucking thing. Bring on the ketchup. Bring on the ketchup. Don't forget the cheese. Don't forget the cheese. Yeah, I'm done with this bollocks, I don't need any practice. Speed burgers, a Parappa Town tradition. You are fucking joking. Come on, honey, you gotta try it. No way. No oh, way. Come on, please, it's a Parappa Town tradition. Okay. We find out that all of the burgers have turned into noodles, because of course they have, and then we get to look into Pappy's inner psyche as another plot device surfaces. He doesn't want to be seen as a baby anymore and wants to be his own man, so whenever he hears an expression relating to someone or himself being a baby, he has one of his classic fantasies, imagining the worst scenario of it happening to him. One of my favourite fantasies of this is when he's sitting with his friends watching adult TV and not understanding the jokes, but they're all watching a show called Danger Tick, where all that happens is... <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I, 
get it. I mean, that's great. I want a Danger Tick t-shirt. Oh, fuck that. I want a Danger Tick TV series. Make it happen, someone, or I will. Okay, I'm having a date with a real man. All right, so Joe Chin from the first game is a real man. Yeah, I don't blame you for fantasizing Sonny picking him over you, Pappy. I mean, he's already got a much bigger... Uh, wait, what the hell is that? His car or his peen? Either way, the burgers have turned into noodles. Happy don't want no noodles, and so there's only one thing we can do to restore order. Bring back the ghost of the original owner of the burger shop, get him back into the kitchen to the shop to show his useless son how it's done, and of course, in true Pappy Rappy style, in the only way he knows how, what has he got to do? Yeah, I know. I gotta believe! Ah, there it is. Is. And holy fucking Christmas, no joke, the Beard Burgers rap, stage one of Parappa the Rapper 2, is in my opinion the single greatest rhythm game introduction in gaming history. It's completely awesome. Of course, I love Master Onion's beginning rap in the first game, but this doesn't even compare. Listen to the funkiness kick in literally straight away and get you ready for an incredible sequel. The tempo, the difficulty with the spaces between the phrases, the lessons gradually getting more difficult with more buttons but all staying on the same solid beats, and the fact that the Burger Man has the greatest accent in PS2 game history. Now that's what I'm talking about! Now go serve those burgers right now! Makes all of this stage such a brilliant introduction both mechanically for those unfamiliar with the game and for how weird, wacky and wonderful Parappa's world is where one second you'll be training for the army and then immediately taking a picture of your instructor posing on top of the obstacles. I also love how the Burger Man talks to himself during the rap and just says random suggestive shit as you're going on. Either way, this intro stage rocks and already sets a better precedent than the original game. And this is followed up by stage two with Rodney Greenblatt, as in the visual design artist for the entire Parappa and Um Jamalami series, actually being a news reporter documenting the phenomenon of every item of food turning into noodles out of nowhere. He's also apparently reporting from Parappa Town, which raises way too many unsettling questions about why this town is named after him. Is Pappy Rappy a secret dictator? This stage is also the triumphant return of fan favorite character Chop Chop Master Onion. Hang on a second, if all the food is turning into noodles, does that mean that Chop Chop Master Onion's head is now noodles. Oh, oh god, no, no! Get it away! No, luckily that isn't what's happened to him. Instead, he's moved on from martial arts teaching and instead has a fitness show on TV about romantic karate. And before we get to watch it, Pappy's dad and Sonny Funny's dad, who walks around like the most groovy dissident I've ever seen, shaking that ass on the floor. while trying to create a device to denoodalize everything, accidentally make the device shrink them to the size of ants, begging the question on how the hell stepping on paper flat characters with paper flat feet even fucking works. And then the show begins, and if you thought the Burger Man's suggestive chatting was a little bit off, it gets so much worse now. Put the kiddies to bed, because this is strictly for adults. <laughs> Here, there are no rules. Just punch and kick at will. Huh. Kicking and punching in bed? That's interesting. You're a very kinky little onion, aren't you? This here is another great track and at a totally different speed and feeling than stage one, with it being slower and more seductively cliched as an awful 70s porno backing track with Master Onion's classic move teaching that everyone loved from the original game. Have you ever wanted to kick, punch, chop and block while snogging your best friend? Well, you can do that now. The whole stage is just hilarious and I really do think we need to tell Sonny Funny that Pappy Rappy has a little something on the side, if you know what I mean. Oh god, this is great. Parappa's dad looks like he's about to kill me. Wish I was a player. Wish I were a player. I'm a tax player. I'm a tax player. Need a good lawyer. Need a good lawyer. Okay, now we definitely need a Chop Chop Master Onion prequel game. What the fuck did this guy do for him to add those lyrics into this song? Let's just get on with it. Next level. Are you sure you want to overwrite? Saving now. Save complete. Why was that creepy? I don't think it was supposed to be creepy, but it really was. The next song is what happens after everybody has accidentally shrunk and they need to get the help of a guru ant in order to grow again. And this stage is even slower than before, but with even faster syllabic use on the buttons and much more offbeat rhythms to throw you off. Plus, it's brilliant in the song whenever you switch between the more panicked and orchestrally stressful overgrowing moments and then end up back at the chilled out and chunky baseline of the tiny segments when the ant feels more in control. However, seriously, I told you the game gets more suggestive. What do I even say about this? I've already been through enough in Loco Roco 
I don't need any more of this. I guess I could use this moment instead to talk about the game itself a little more then. And man, if you thought the original game was a bit too precise and tricky when you swear you did something good, now all of that shit has been fixed. Even on the PS4 emulated version, there is no input lag anywhere near as awful, and it just feels a million times more snappy with the fact that there are more animations and smoother things that happen whenever you input a command. It feels like you're actually rapping with your buttons more than the first game, and you actually stamp on your rap line every time you press a button to see how close your timing was to the original line you're trying to copy. The game itself has more multiplayer options as well for battling where you need to try your hardest to copy previous lines wrapped by the other person, and these can be ridiculous fun with another friend or against the computer player where it can be the hardest challenge in the world, or on the easy mode where the computer player is just too funny with how shit it is. There are bonus games in the story mode of pressing the right buttons as blocks appear with fast reaction times, and even the cool mode mechanic of the original game when you do extra great with freestyling is back, and even alluded to in the cutscenes when your teacher for the stage tells you over and over not to copy exactly what they do and do your own groovy thing. However, of course, you can just copy them and beat the game perfectly that way, but it's cool that they encourage you to do your own thing for the extra challenges. Good going. <laughs> Thanks, but you're still bigger than your normal size. <gasps> you're right. Make me small again. <laughs> the next stage is pretty sweet since you meet up with the sister of the driving instructor from the original game whoa, 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 whoa. training you in the army to go against the noodle menace and you even get an awesome callback to that stage with one line from the old song coming back into this new song. You also just have to love her character design of the ammo belt and camo mixed with a tutu. It's fucking incredible. Wait, wait a second. Are those skipping ropes being flipped around by tits? Yes, they are! Holy shit, they're literal titty twisters! Gain, stop it! Yes, there's much more sexual stuff going on in this game, absolutely. That little slippery thing tastes so good. And all the time. But it's also worth mentioning that the game is so much tighter in its comedy. The original game had funny moments, but they were more for how ridiculous situations were and unintentionally bad things, like the ending song before the final stage. But here, there are so many more actually funny moments that point fingers towards the game's plot and design along with many more off-color and unpredictable jokes in general. Here are a few of my favorites. Maybe your dad can help us. He's an inventor, right? Yeah. I think he used to study noodles, too. Even my mother. She ate so many burgers that... D did she pass away? No, she turned into one. Stare eye to eye as we poke each other's eyeballs out. Pizza delivery! Cleaning service! Visitor from space. Just walking by! Hello! Do it! May sweet take over the world! This is helping us at all. Then the next stage is with a motherfucking hairdressing octopus. And this is yet another great track where you need to outperform hairstyles against the crazed octopus while every single action you rap with, snipping, cutting, shaving, and dying, actually affects the 3D hair of the characters that you're working on at that part of the song. It's so damn good, it makes you feel like you're actually cutting and dying away like a crazed octopus hairdresser. You also get to team up with Umjama Lamy with a reference to her own game since it's her band that actually provide the music to this stage. Leave it to Lamy! I'll get to her soon enough, but not just yet, not now. Shh, shh, you be, shh, be quiet. Good night, my sweet prince. If you didn't notice at this point as well, look at this game's visuals, I bloody love them. It's the same art style as the original game and a little less sharp with the PS2 rendering against the more pixely PS1, but that's made up for tons with better animations, models in general, 60 FPS, and so, so, so many more creative character designs and visual variety with colors and locations. There's so many things going on during the gameplay, it's sad I'm too busy concentrating above it all of the time, and the jokes even extend to visual details with cameos from the original game actually being used in really funny ways, and things that happen in split seconds that you may even miss. How the noodles all look like spiders I also find ridiculously charming. So the next stage follows everybody needing to beat a rare video game in order to change the inner workings of the cartridge so that it'll work in a ray gun to denoodalize the town. But there's a spooky catch to this video gaming segment that I'll have to let someone else introduce because it's something right out of a fucking creepy pasta. Hello boys and girls and welcome to the Mr. Candy Pasta channel where I narrate scary stories that are the scariest and I have a question for you. Well I'm glad you asked because it's a game that I let someone else explain because it's too scary for me to talk about enjoy but don't enjoy it there was a strange rumor going on that everyone who couldn't clear this game could only eat noodles oh no not that please 
This is yet another genre the soundtrack heads into and where the game starts getting challenging. However, why all the people that you've met in your journey so far just so happen to be inside a rare video game that no one has ever beaten before I'm calling bullshit on? So instead, let's gush over the soundtrack as a whole. I do love the original game, I really do, but there's just no contest in my opinion. This soundtrack kicks ass. It's a lot more lively and accentuated with drums and upbeat in the bass lines for a much more funky disco vibe, but it does have different tempos, genres, and instrumentation on top depending on how aggressive, insane, or relaxed the characters are in their respective stages. Some levels even have completely different segments, like in the Guru Ant stage, changing the key from major to minor and adding more tense high strings on top of the beat when he loses control of his size. When you start failing a stage, even the minimalistic, bad, and awful versions of the beats of the songs are still funky as fuck despite how stripped back they are. Getting worse. Cut. Even the damn loading screen is brilliant, check it out! I hate being stiff. Well, you better let Sonny know then. Oh look, we're nearing the end of the game now. It's time for a first in Pappy Rappy history. He actually gets involved in a rap battle. This is cool shit. Against Colonel Noodle, who's actually the burger shop guy's son from earlier, who hated constant burgers from his childhood so much that he simply had to sabotage his dad's restaurant and therefore all food in the world and turn them into noodles. Oh, I know. I gotta believe. Oh, dude, no, no. You did not just go there. You do not get to say that. You've gone too far. You're gonna die. Since it's a rap battle as well, unlike the toy toilet battle if you can call it a battle from the original game, this time Pappy actually makes up his own lyrics to go against the bad guy, which is brilliant. And sometimes the lyrics can be Morbid, suck it. I know you all like it. You're making this too easy, game! Basically, this actually feels like a proper rhythm game boss battle, and the backing track is just as groovy, yet uneasy and volatile as you'd expect for the late game. The best things in life taste good, we'll chop suey. Wake up! Wake up! Can't say much for the ending though, in Pappy tradition you get a bloody awful ending cutscene song with cringy vocals and bad lyrics, not as bad as one though luckily, and we find out that Sonny Funny was secretly watching Pappy take down the noodles and become his own man in the process, he's not a baby anymore, and she even sees him and the ants stretch up from the roof of his house. Yeah, I bet she liked watching those rods growing. The final stage itself though is with the same creature from the first game doing a gig with you and it's a bit too similar to Pappy 1's ending to stand out at all, even if you do get to do Pappy's lovely catchphrase again. By the way, yeah, you can tap runs everywhere in this game as well. Enjoy. Please help us, my god, he won't stop cutting! So, yeah, I would give Parappa the Rapper 2 the salvage, but I don't have a physical copy of the game, so I can't do that. But what I can say is go and get this fucking game right now. It's on PS4 and it's brilliant. As a sequel, it plays better, looks better, there's more gameplay, more replay value, more and better songs. I've got nothing else to say, so instead, I'll end this video with a reminder. If you ever want to accomplish anything in life, no matter how hard the struggle is, no matter how little faith you have, in yourself. Just remember one thing that you have to do. You gotta and if you believe hard enough, you might be lucky enough to get these brand new Pappy Rappy t-shirts from the Categorist Merchandise Store. What a seamless transition, and what an awesome shirt, tank top, or hoodie, wouldn't you agree? The outtakes will be on in just a second, everybody, but yes, to celebrate the release of this video, the lovely Wad Up Nico on Twitter, please go and hire him, designed this awesome new piece of apparel to show off your Pappy Rappy love. Pixel Empire shipped internationally and in multiple colors if you don't like the colors you see here, and not to mention, if you click on the link below this video in the description and use the discount code CADDY on checkout in big capital letters, you get an extra 15% off. And of course, Pixel Empire don't just do my official merchandise, but also all of these kinds of things. Yeah, go and have a look at the site. So thanks so much for listening, thanks for watching, and enjoy the outtakes. Aye, 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 subscribe. Well, the thing is, I got a pretty good fuck. Yeah, I got a pretty good fuck. If you're lying, honey. I thought you were saying something first. No. Oh. You're fucking joking. I forgot my life. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings to Sally. Uh...